Welcome to Wines and Wonders with Kirsten Fox. True stories with a side of wine. Looking for inspiration for your life and your wine glass? This is your podcast. Here's Kirsten. So excited to have you here. Each season on Wines and Wonders, we explore a genre of true or historical stories with wines paired to them. This season, you're hearing about stories from my own life I call Beyond Coincidence Stories. These are stories that have happened to me that indicate that there is a higher power watching over and guiding me. I'm not sure maybe you've been delivered some of these messages as a survivor of a plane crash, cancer, a child with cancer, two divorces, After being through all this, I have fine-tuned my awareness of those uh, universal powers helping me in life because they've gotten me really through a lot of of big challenges. And on the other side of this, as an executive sommelier, I used to write a blog on HuffPost. I had a radio show on the Cumulus Radio Network, and I can't help but pair wines to things. I've even paired wines to waxing. And yes, Screaming Eagle is one of my pairing suggestions, so you can go to HuffPost to read about that. Today's show is called Money in the Road. We have a family dog named Roxy. She is a yellow lab mix who is so attuned to her family and to humans that I swear she reads our minds. She is absolutely an amazing dog. And she was in the room, as my husband told me, my husband of 14 years told me that he wanted to move out and he no longer wanted to be married. And she was then my partner, Roxy was, as I cried myself to sleep many, many nights and during the day as well, of course. My husband was my greatest supporter as he struggled in his world to gain traction in business that he was trying um, to work on and be a success in. He really didn't have a lot of success. And what he would do is he transferred that to me and talked all the time about my successes to our friends and family. I mean, he was funny, he was kind, and I always thought that we would be together as we continued along in life. And part of that was we were in debt. Before he announced he was leaving, we had no savings, and my most profitable company was going to probably make somewhere in the neighborhood of $25,000 in sales in 2017. We sold our family home, and we used some of the proceeds to pay for a a year of rent on a house uh, that we were going to be in, and then he moved out two months later. I was devastated. I loved this man. And yet on the reality side of things, I knew he wasn't making any money and there was going to be no alimony and no child support. So I had to quickly figure out how to increase my monthly income and do it immediately. So through all of this, and uh, and again, this has been my life, uh, all of our lives, we all have things we go through and, and learn through each uh trial and tribulation. So I became aware of the study of energy and the power of thoughts. I started meditating. I began listening to Abraham Hicks. And if you don't know what Abraham Hicks is, go to YouTube and and search for Abraham Hicks. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of posts. I listened to a gentleman named John Asaraf who had a series on making money. I bought Dave Ramsey's Total Money Makeover book and the workbook because I was going to get my hands around this issue that had evaded me for really my whole adult life. For at least two weeks, probably three or so, I was obsessed with learning as much as I could to help bring money in. And one of the things that John Asaraf said in his tapes was, You know, you have these things, these things that you say to yourself and you repeat them so that they become something that you take in and and believe. Now, when I was saying these things in my head or out loud, I didn't really truly believe them at all. 
but I just kind of started acting like I knew what I was doing and saying these things. And I really latched on to one that said, money will come to me from known and unknown sources. And I would, any time I thought of something to say to myself, it was that. So as I said, this was a study of about two to three weeks. And Roxy, back to the dog, we used to go on a walk every morning when she was with me because I share custody of her and our youngest child with my ex-husband now. Um, And Roxy went with me on a morning walk every day. And this was often sunrise because I had to be at work in my own business or we had events or whatever I had to do. So this was early in the morning. And I was choosing this morning that I'm talking about to say that phrase, money will come to me from known and unknown sources. So Roxy and I walk, we walked, we've moved since then, but we walked the same path every day. And it was down a really thin road that had no shoulders. So when a car would come one way or the other, either way, I would step off the road with Roxy because it was dangerous. It was a thin road and there was no shoulder. So this morning that I'm talking about, we're walking down the road and a car came towards us. So we stepped off the road and I noticed many, many shining circles in the road in front of us. I mean, I'm talking like 30 or 40 brightly lit up circles in the road right in front of us. And the car passed over the road and went along. And I went out into the road to see what these were. And I saw coins that were pressed deeply into the asphalt. These coins had been there for a long time. They were gummed up and they were really gnarled from the tires that had rolled over them. Well, (laughs) I sit Roxy down back on the side of the road at this point, and I grabbed her collar, and she's such a good dog, like I said. She'll sit there till I tell her to move. So she's sitting there, and I'm using her tag, you know, the tag that you have the phone number on if she gets lost. I use her tag to pry these coins out of the road. So she must have thought I was, like, just really whack mom. (laughs) But I realized that money had just come to me from a formerly unseen source. It had been there all along. I'd been walking this road for months with my dog and never had seen these. All I used to do when I wanted to make more money, if I needed to make more money, is I would say, okay, I'm going to add more hours and I'll add four more things to my plate so that the money will come in. But the phrase, money will come to me from known and unknown sources allowed me to open up my eyes to all sorts of different options that I had never considered. And this had only been a couple weeks, three weeks, not years. And these were the coins in the road to prove to me I needed to first believe and then things would happen. In a strange way, my life completely turned around after this man I love moved out. That year, I did declare gross sales of about $25,000. The following year, I was over 100000 and I will be declaring over $200,000 in gross sales in basically two years of time. And I attribute that a lot to being open to what the universe wants to give me in terms of resources. Money may be waiting for you or a relationship, or a new car, or whatever you need to have a fulfilled life. And where is it going to come from? And please listen to this story to be open to known and unknown sources. If you're willing to allow it in, it might happen a lot faster than you would believe ever. Try it yourself. See what happens. Let me know on our Instagram account, Wines and Wonders, please, because I would love to hear what's happened to you. Stay tuned to hear what type of wine Kirsten will pair with this story right after this. Today's podcast is brought to you by my company, Uplift Gift, when words aren't enough. When I had cancer, 
friends sent me the most wonderful gifts and cards, gifts from their hearts to me that made me feel comforted and loved from all around the country. Since I wrote for the Huffington Post, I did a series on wines to pair with breast cancer, and therefore it was very public, and I started to get messages, emails, calls from people asking what I suggested they should do for one of their friends. And their friend was either going through a diagnosis like I had, or just divorced, or dealing with a parent who died, or job loss, that kind of thing. And I realized as I was going through all of these messages that people need help supporting friends and family who are given bad news. So I opened a company, Uplift Gift. We are basically there to help you say sometimes what words can't. Next up, Kirsten's choice for a wine to open after the show. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you missed the first segment, I talked about my husband moving out, me needing to make way more money than I ever had to support myself and my family. And while reciting the phrase, money will come to me from known and unknown sources, I happened upon many shiny coins that had been in the road a long time as I walked that day every day with my dog, and they were just waiting for me to pick them up. But with that phrase, I had to be open. I had to take time to notice what was around me and let the universe support me. Well, so what wine am I going to pair with this amazing experience? I am going to go to one of the most money-making categories of wine these days, and I'm sure you're familiar with it. It's called rosé. You might be familiar with pink wine, and it might be the pink wine that your grandmother used to drink out of boxes often or out of big, big bottles, and it would be called white Zinfandel or white Merlot, and these are very sweet pink wines. And we usually, in the wine industry, we would call those blush wines. Those are American sweet wines that have a pink color. Now, what I'm talking about is a category called rosé. It's also a pink wine, but they're vinified, which means made. They're vinified in a dry style. So they're very, very, very good with foods. Okay, there are two ways to make rosé wine generally really officially. So one is called the Sagné method and another is called a maceration method. So the first one, Sagné. Sagné means to bleed and it's actually spelled S-A-I-G-N-E-E. Of course, those French, they just don't pronounce half the letters in the words, but Sagné means to bleed. And it's used, interestingly, not a lot in France, um, but a lot in regions where Their primary focus is red wines. So think Napa Valley and their Cabernets, okay? When the winery is making a Cabernet, for example, they pick the grapes, squeeze the juice out of the grapes, and then let the juice sit on the skins for a time to pick up things like color, tannin, interesting flavors and textures, that kind of thing. As they're making the red wine, Within about 12 hours of squeezing the grapes, the winemaker has a choice to bleed off some of this lightly colored juice in order to, number one, make a rosé of this lightly pink wine, but also then it leaves a more concentrated red wine in the vat. So the winemaker gets two products from one grape, the red wine and also the pink or rosé wine. That's called Sagné. That's the Sagné method to bleed off. The other type of method is called maceration. And this is interestingly used in one of the first regions to produce rosé wine in Provence, France. Now, this is a method where they intend to just make a rosé wine. This method is the same as normal reds, but the juice just sits on the skins for a short time. And then they remove the skins and you're left with a light pink wine. And 
is you look at the wine colors, the Saunye method, the first method we talk about, usually produces a darker pink wine, where the uh, regular maceration method out of France produces a lighter color, almost like just a light salmony pink. So the reason I'm talking about this, this category is the rosé category is going crazy. Last year, Nielsen did a study of the previous two years of sales by volume of rosé. And in those two years, it increased by 52%. That's absolutely insane as a category growth. And then if you look at where people are drinking wine, most of the rosé, the imported rosé, comes into the United States via New York City. Most of it comes from Europe. So it goes right into New York City. And there is a a volume that comes in and (laughs) 25% of that volume of imported rosé doesn't even make it out of New York City. It is being consumed in New York City. 25% of all the imported rosés don't even make it out of that city. It's such a popular drink there. So why is this going on? Well, if you look at millennials, who are the newest drinking population, they are extremely adventurous. I mean, they will try anything. They'll be like, yeah, sure. I've never heard of an Albarino from Spain, but I'll take a glass of it. Sounds great. They want to experiment and discover new things. You combine that with their use of social media, especially the women, and you get a wine type that not only tastes great, but looks fabulous in selfies. And you may note that the hashtag rosé all day gets over 100,000 hits a day. And during the summer season, when many, many people are drinking rosés more than just the whole year, it can climb into the millions. Rosé all day. Hashtag rosé all day. Next up, Kirsten's choice for a wine to open after the show. Thanks again to my company, Uplift Gift, for sponsoring the show today. And my choice for the wine that I would pair with the delivery of the money on the road to me, I would choose Aerith Rosé of Pinot Noir out of Oregon. We serve this often on a tour that I do here in Park City, Utah called the Mines and Wines Tour. It's a salmon pink wine. Now it is, though, done by the Sanye method. So that's an interesting little, it's a lighter Sanye method wine. It offers aromas of rose petals and white peach and like a passion fruit, tropical kind of aroma. And then in your mouth, it is got pear and apricot and even another tropical fruit, kind of like a papaya. Absolutely a prosperous rosé. For my money will come to me from known and unknown sources experience. That's it for today's show. I really appreciate you listening to me chat about the money in the road, inspiring me to be open to all sorts of unique financial opportunities that are helping me support myself in a great lifestyle now. We look forward to sharing a new story and wine with you next time. Thanks for tuning in to Wines and Wonders. 